So one of the big news items surrounding WWE over the past several days, in fact the past couple of weeks, has been the controversy surrounding NXT trainer Bill DeMott and his alleged treatment of those performers in NXT. And there's been a lot of ugly rumors that have been talk, discussed and talked about, a lot of ugly things that have been said about him and the things that he has done. And many of you have come to me and asked me my thoughts on this, and my very simple thoughts are good riddance. Good riddance to build them out. Where some point in time along the way, this guy got this much power, I'll never understand. Now don't get me wrong, you don't have to be an all-time great or a star to have been a great teacher. And you look at the NFL, Bill Belichick, win if you can, lose if you must, always cheat. Yes, that's true, but he was never a star player in the but he is a Hall of Fame coach. He's one of the greatest coaches in the history of the business. I mean, Phil Jackson, going to basketball, he was a role player during his NBA career, never really a star for sure. But yet, look at how many NBA championships he's won. Count them, 10 plus 1, 11. Just because he was never a Michael Jordan type of talent or going back to his time, a Willis Reed or Walt Clyde Frazier or Earl the Pearl Monroe type of talent, does that mean he wasn't qualified to be a coach? Not, no, not necessarily. But what really troubles me about this is what Bill DeMott represents and what his actions and behaviors represent. And that's what I think should be the real focus and real discussion here. First, we look at Bill DeMott. First of all, again, I don't understand why the hell you would want this jackass training your young wrestlers that are trying to make it to the big stage, but... You know, that's somebody's decision, and somebody needs to answer and be held accountable for that decision. But somewhere along the way, Bill DeMott apparently thought that using racist and homophobic language and physical and verbal and mental and psychological abuse equated to effective training and teaching techniques. You've got these young people, many of whom are pursuing a dream, perhaps even a lifelong dream. And they're coming to you with their trust. They are coming to you to be taught. They are coming to you to learn because they think that you actually know. They think that you can actually teach them how to become a WWE superstar. And they are rewarded with your racism, your homophobia, your sexism, your physical, your verbal, your mental, your psychological abuse, what have you. Where along the way did this become good, effective teaching techniques when it comes to professional wrestling? Why has this ever been classified as anything good? And why would Bill DeMott sit there and think that this is the best way to get the best out of people? This is the best way to teach people. You know, this whole thing of, well, you got to weed them out. Well, by the time they get to WWE and to the NXT level, you would have hoped you would have already done your due diligence. You would have already went through your vetting process. And at this point in time, you would safely assume that these people actually want to be there. So you no longer need to actually weed them out. You need to teach them. You need to help them learn. You need to get the most out of them. You need to put them in advantageous situations. Help them have every possible option they can to succeed for themselves individually and for the company as a whole. Why would anything other than that be the teaching philosophy? That's what I don't get here. And what I don't understand is why more people aren't taking WWE more to task for this. Because with Bill DeMott, being in this position, that means that somebody else put him in that position. And that would be the WWE. And don't be naive about this and sit there and try to tell me, well, they didn't know. They couldn't have possibly had any idea. You really think they didn't fucking know? You really think they didn't have any idea? Not only did they have an idea, and you'll never convince me otherwise, they were okay with it and they were signing off on this bullshit. And how troubling and concerning is this? Again, by the time they've gotten to that level, you would hope, you would think that you would have vetted out the crap and you would have the ones that you want to deal with. You have the ones that you think could potentially become money makers. And I don't understand how this type of attitude, this type of mindset, this type of teaching approach and philosophy is going to help teach anybody how to draw money for themselves and more importantly, especially the WWE. How is running them down and treating them like trash? How is sitting there and making them feel this tall when they're putting their trust in you? When they are trying to be inspired by you, trying to learn from you, trying to be taught by you? How is that helping any fucking thing whatsoever?
So why would the WWE want this type of culture, want this type of environment for these young talents, especially when they're trying to do so many stars, maybe the loss of things with NXT. You saddle up these young talents with bullshit like this from Bill DeMott of all fucking people. It's not like it's Triple H that's doing this, or Stone Cold Steve Austin, or The Rock, or Hulk Hogan, or any other big name star. It's fucking Bill DeMott, Hugh Morris. Hugh Morris! That's who you've got teaching people. This is the guy that you're allowing to do this type of crap. Why? Why has somebody not long ago open hand did pimp slap this little ass punk bitch? That's what I don't understand. And the fact that WWE waited so long to act once these rumors got out there, once these stories got out there, is puzzling and should be very troubling to all of you. But what really concerns me the most about this is this whole kind of machismo type of environment and culture that is cultivated and nurtured within professional wrestling. And I've seen many different, uh, you know, older hands of professional wrestling talk about, well, you know, I think it was a bad now. Look at my day. Man, I can't imagine what they say. Okay. And what's your fucking point? You know, this whole notion of, well, it was better back then because they did this and did that. It's just ridiculous horseshit and everybody fucking knows it. The whole thing, well, back in my day... You know, when we were kids, we got our asses whooped. Well, look at how many of my fucking generation's in prison now. Look at how many of my generation have kids when they're fucking kids themselves. Look at all the freaking problems that we have. And let's not even get on my parents' and grandparents' generation or great-grandparents' generation and see how badly they fucked up this country. Oh, that's a great pillar and shining example to follow. That's for fucking sure. Get the fuck out of here. This whole notion of, well, that's tough love and, ah, bullshit. These people are paying you money to learn. They are paying you money, especially on the independent scene, when they go to these different wrestling schools to be taught, not to be run down. I understand the process of wanting to be tough and weed them out. I get that. But you do get to a point where you cross a certain line just because somebody like Luthez or any other number of old school trainers did shit like that 40 or 50 fucking years ago and you think you turned out all right. That doesn't make it fucking okay. Look at how many wrestlers from the 70s, the 80s, and 90s are all fucked up on yak, crack, smack, and any other thing that they possibly put in their dad. Oh, but that's a great pillar and shining example of how things should be taught and how professional wrestling should be taught to young students. Get the fuck out of here. This whole notion, this protective bullshit bubble that professional wrestling lives in is ridiculous and it needs to stop. I don't have, you don't have to be nice to people. You don't have to tell them all the time how Star Spangled Awesome they are. You can tell them the truth. You can tell them they suck. You can tell them why they suck and tell them what they need to do to stop sucking. You can teach them. At the end of the day, that's what you're supposed to do if you're a trainer, a coach, a mentor. You're supposed to teach. You're supposed to help. You're supposed to get more out of every individual. Part of the whole thing you would think of being a good teacher, being a good trainer, is adapting your style to that individual student and being able to get the most out of them. What one might need to get the most out of them could be entirely different than five other people, and each of those five other people can have entirely different styles. But I highly doubt the best way to go about that is racist and homophobic sexist shit, and also throwing in there some physical, mental, psychological, emotional abuse just for the fuck all of it. Why in the fuck would anybody defend this shit? Why in the fuck would anybody sit there and try to excuse this by saying, well, back in my day, well, back in your day, it was fucking wrong, too. Just because that's the way it used to be, or just that's the way it once was, that doesn't make it okay. This is the same country that had state-sanctioned racism in the South until the early 1960s. This is the same country that didn't allow women to vote until the 1920s. Just because it had always been that way before that didn't make it okay. This is the same country that had legalized slavery until the 1860s. Again, just because it was the way it was before didn't mean it was okay then. It doesn't mean it was ever okay. And it most certainly doesn't make it okay or something that we can look back fondly on in the future. Good riddance to build them up. And good riddance, hopefully, someday to this whole mindset and mentality of these blubbering boob idiots involved with professional wrestling that think that this type of shit is okay, that try to excuse this shit, that try to justify this shit, and try to sit there that this is anything other than flat-out abuse. It's taking advantage of people. It's this whole Napoleon complex, this inferiority complex. Maybe you're mad. 
because you never got your chance. You felt you were so much better than you actually fucking were. Maybe it's the whole thing. You got a little bit of power and now you want to beat off to it. Maybe you're drunk on that power that you think you have that you do not. Maybe you like ruining young lives. I don't fucking know. Maybe you like dashing other people's dreams because maybe your dream never came to fruition. But good rings to build them on. And good riddance, hopefully, someday to this mentality in professional wrestling because it's stupid. 